A sentient being experiences the existence of his own limbs within himself by means of his own inner intelligence. Even so, the jiva perceives the existence of the world of diversity within itself. So just as we have a sense of our own limbs, we have a sense of the external world. The translator has put next to the word jiva the cosmic being in this case. This is the virat. So I don't know why I didn't just say virat because he talks about that in the next chapter or whether this is an assumption. I don't think we need to understand it as an assumption that it's the cosmic person. It's the individual, just as we experience a sense of our own limbs, which we experience even if we don't have the limbs, if we're an amputee apparently, there's the so-called phenomenon of phantom limbs. So just as we have a sense of our own limbs, we also have a sense of the existence of the world of diversity. The infinite consciousness is unborn and undivided like space. All these worlds are its limbs, as it were. So here we're talking about worlds. In the previous sentence it spoke of the world of diversity. And here it's the worlds. Because you create a world, I create a world, our next door neighbour creates a world and so on. These are the limbs of consciousness. This consciousness, which is at the heart of my being, it has nothing to do with me any more than it's got to do with you. It's the same consciousness operating. It's totally uncolored by the personality. We could call it the light of sentience, if you like. A sentient ball of iron may visualise within itself the potential existence of a knife and a needle, etc. Even so, the jiva sees or experiences within itself the existence of the three worlds, though this is no more than a delusion or false perception. The three worlds are simply a way of describing everything. It's a traditional Indian classification which is understood in various ways, but we could understand it. I think on a practical level we could understand it as the physical world, the so-called physical world, the world of our emotions and our mental world, the world of our imagination and thoughts. But you can interpret it however you like. It just means all of experience. It's all of categorized experience. It's this categorization which the jiva constructs. It's the jiva that's constructed these categorizations through the cognitive process. So we've seen how time and space are created by the mind. And therefore everything which arises within time and space is also created by the mind. There's stuff going on. One response to it is to understand it, and we understand it by categories, and then by creating emotional notions such as this is desirable and this is undesirable. So the sentient ball of iron may visualize the potential existence of a knife and a needle, both made of iron. So the point is everything is constructed from our own psyche. Even in the insentient seed, there is the potential tree with all its numerous branches, leaves, flowers and fruits, though not as such diverse objects. Even so, all these worlds exist in Brahman, though not as such, but in an undifferentiated state. In a mirror, whether you regard it as sentient or insentient, the city is reflected, though you may also truthfully say that there is no such reflection in the mirror and it is seen and also not seen. Such is the relationship between the three worlds and Brahman. It is sometimes described as everything being reflected in consciousness, which is true, but then it presupposes that there is something being reflected. 
and it's only consciousness reflecting itself in consciousness. What is known as the world is nothing but time, space, motion and substantiality, and all these are non different from the ego sense on account of their mutual interdependence. Now, the factors by which we build up our experience of the world. We've already explored time, space, the power of now, the power of here, motion and substantiality. What is this, what does this refer to? This is actually a very specific, very significant part of the experiencing. If I walk in a straight line, at some point I'll experience resistance. In other words, I'll hit it, I'll hit something, I'll walk into something. This is substantiality. We've either got resistance or we've got the possibility of motion. And, th and that's it basically. From the sensation or otherwise of resistance, we create notions of a physical world and the ability or otherwise to move in it. So that's motion and substantiality. From the, from the point of view of self-inquiry, once we've realized the nature of everything, then there's stillness. No matter what frenetic activity seems to be going on, there is essentially stillness. And we're free from the notional nature of motion. It's like the whirling dervish. This is Brahman. The world appears to be spinning round, but there's stillness. The, the dervish does not get dizzy. The dervish is still, as everything is apparently spinning around. But of course, nothing is spinning around. It's only the dervish. <laughs>